up welcome to a brand new video it's bright and early about 7 45 a.m and today is basically just a maintenance day there's not gonna be any racing of this thing over here old vader um we got two things at hand first vader what are we doing to vader today is basically the pcv system on this car needed a bit of a reworking there's a couple things that are all screwed up and jacked up on this thing and under normal driving conditions, I could probably avoid it and not really be a big deal. But when you're out on track, um, that crankcase pressure is definitely something to keep an eye on. And there's some things I learned from the last time I was out on track um, that definitely made the PCV system be something that I needed to emphasize on correcting. So we're going to jump into that, correct that. And then we got Old Faithful back there. Some will call it Old Faithful. I call it Big Bertha she actually needs some maintenance done. So we're just gonna do a quick oil change on that because that is the tow pig. And then recently it started to kind of uh, leak coolant. So I'm assuming this Corvette, this Chevy here is no longer requiring all that attention. So now the truck has decided that it's its turn to create some drama. Not a big deal. Uh, tracked it down to the coolant overflow tank is slowly leaking. So I got one here, I purchased it. I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out first. So before I jump into the Corvette, um, I need to make sure that the daily is nice and happy. So we're going to start doing that, draining that the oil, uh, doing that. And then in between, I'm just going to be jumping back and forth between cars. So let's get it. So like we were saying, the PCV system up on Vader here is just literally was just literally wired completely trash. So you basically, when you come down to looking at the system here, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and rotate my camera, kind of bring it down here for starters, this here from your dry sum system, right? It's not supposed to be venting to the atmosphere. Now I did have a conversation with Haltech, which is my intake here. That's the Haltech Super B. Um, they do sell an intake coupler that you're supposed to pin this to. So ideally this line here, which is the outer line here of the dry sump is going to trans pretty much come through here and tap right into the intake coupler well be behind the mass airflow. Mass airflow on this intake is over here somewhere, um, back here. And basically you're gonna use the intake's pressure to go ahead and vent the dry sump. But since right now it's venting to atmosphere, when you're under load five, six, 7,000 RPMs for 20 minutes at a time, um, you're not really taking advantage of that. You're kind of just doing this and you're building up tons and tons of crankcase pressure. You can actually see, and it's probably not gonna come out on film, but I actually can see, I've noticed that my dry sump usually has some sort of fluid residual like on the outside of it. And I'm just assuming that's just buildup of pressure, not being able to be evacuated properly and probably causing my catch can not to do its full job, which I have the Mighty Mouse mild setup here. Another little thing I want to fix is, as you can see here, on track that day, and I'll try to find some footage and kind of place it in here. This line here basically taps into both valve covers. You got one here on this side and you got one on the other side. But as you can see here, this is not really the way it should be done, right? You just got this. This is actually a T I put on here momentarily. And then there's another T here. So I'm basically going to trim this hose properly put the proper one here to allow the bend properly. This is actually working really, really tight, but on track, this kept coming off. So we're gonna correct this line here to fix this issue. And then if eventually, I actually have a couple pieces coming in to see if I can convert this to AN and really make this like a nice clean setup between both valve covers. Um, you also have the option to tap into this. Uh, typically that's the wild setup for Mighty Mouse. So I'm not gonna kind of play with that yet, but I might in the future, run two catch cans. I'll have this one here, kind of doing the crank, doing the other venting for the, for the dirty side, and then this just kind of doing for the valve covers. But that's not right now. Right now, the goal is fix this really ugly line and prevent it from popping off, um, which it, tend to, it was doing a lot on track, kind of leaking on my valve covers. So clean that up and definitely correct this. Like this should not be like this. Um, and like I said, if you're out on just normal cruising, you can get away with having it vent to the atmosphere, but this car is going to be spirity, spirit driven occasionally, but its main focus is track driving. And one of the things I want to make sure that this car is, is happy. And that at no point am I doing stuff like this and potentially causing harm to this motor. Um, I'm going to try to find some clips. I don't think I recorded the day I was out on track, but I, my, my bumper was coming coated, 
coated in black. I mean, my car is obviously black, but you could definitely tell that it was being coated in some sort of soot from oil kind of being pushed through. Um, when talking to Haltech, they do assume that it's due to the way that this is not venting properly and not using the intakes pressure to help relieve the crankcase pressure. So I'm, I'm really excited to set that up and kind of see if that does help the car. So we're going to jump on that. And then, like I said, we got to work on that guy. So let's get started with that guy and then we'll move back over to this guy. First thing I want to focus on is getting the old tow pig nice and happy. So we got here the new coolant overflow tank or reservoir, however you want to call it. Um, looks pretty straightforward. Just one large hose there and then two little uh, up here on the top. And then just basically, I believe, one or two screws. I haven't really looked into it much, but we'll figure it out in just a second now. Um, and then I do want to do an oil change on it. This is pretty much the oil I decided to go with. Um, we got the uh, Pennzoil Ultra Platinum. I'm still running the same weight that the trucks had, you know, since, the, since day one, which is 0W20. Uh, just going with this one because I've heard good things about this one. So um, that's what I'm running in. And I got two, two gallons here uh, for it. And then just running the stock oil filter. This isn't no race application. This doesn't need anything fancy. Um, so that's what kind of I'm going to start with. But first things first is I'm going to start letting the oil drain. And as the oil starts to drain, I'll start working on this thing to try to be as optimal with my time as possible. One of the beauties of having a, let's say, seven and a half inch lifted truck is that literally no jacks are required. I could just slide up in here. Um, I got to get further back, obviously. Take the oil filter off, unscrew it, put the oil pan uh, catch on here and let it drain. So my truck actually has a JLT intake on here because just as anyone would know with any of these trucks, a direct port injection, you know, it's definitely uh, important to have one of these. So part of the process of me draining the oil down there is obviously emptying out this catch can. I will say I'm not good at uh, keeping up with this catch can and draining it as I should way more frequently than every oil change interval. Um, but it is what it is. I'm gonna drain it now. Um, one thing I've noticed, you know, pretty much up to like today, I've, you should just take this truck to get a quick lube and stuff like that. But it's gotten so overly expensive with, you know, our car, our trucks being an eight quart system. Um, it's like 140 bucks here in my local area uh, for fully synthetic. I bought all the products for 70 bucks and pretty much I've only been about five, 10 minutes into this process and I'm almost done. So, um, and that's me kind of stopping and walking around and doing other stuff. Um, every time I told them, hey, I need you to drain the oil catch can. It always was some sort of like weird discovery for them. It made me a little nervous every single time if they were gonna do it or not. So um, I'm kind of happy to be doing this myself and draining in, I get an opportunity to kind of look at the oil, see what it looks like. Uh, and yeah, so I'm just gonna unscrew this. I already started loosening it before I turned the camera back on. So just gotta unscrew it, get the oil out. And as you can see, it's pretty wet at the very top meaning there's probably quite a bit in here. Yep, this is from me doing lack. I'm not gonna turn the camera tilt towards it, but the oil's literally right there at the top, which is not good. You probably wanna be cleaning this out on the truck maybe like every thousand miles or something like that. Not like I'm doing, like pretty much when my oil change interval is up and ready to go. I clearly made a pretty big mess here. Um, the pros of having a lifted truck is the fact that I don't have to jack it up, which is a beautiful thing in itself. But the con is, sorry car passing by, but the con is um, gravity. This oil is going to kind of travel pretty far once it hits the bucket or basically what it hit here, which is my lift kit's cross member, is the fact that it's going to splash. And now my driveway requires cleaning. And it's one of those things that I just get annoyed with because I definitely didn't want to have to clean my driveway today. I just wanted to be in and out with this project, but it is what it is at this point. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, drain this in here, but I like to do it slowly. Just look to see if I see anything in here. No, it's actually beautiful. Just nice and dirty. To be expected. But nothing. I'm going to clean it out with a towel real quick. Wipe it down and then get the truck re-oiled up so i actually kind of jumped a little bit ahead and started uh pulling this out so 
There's two 10 millimeter screws, one right beneath your air box and then one over near your battery. Um, I thought I'd have to remove this, but it seems to be sliding right out. Um, as you can see, I have it pretty much here in my hand. Um, avoiding disconnecting any hoses. This thing is completely empty pretty much. Um, and then you can, I can visibly see the coolant here. So I'm glad I know exactly that I, my diagnosis was correct. I want to try to avoid messing with the hoses as much as I can um, to not create any uh, air pockets in the cooling system. So I'm going to pull that big boy off, swap the new one right on, then swap these two, put the new one right in place, fill her back up. all done so now we're gonna work on basically this PCV line here um, and obviously the biggest one is this one here I also bought some adapters here to clean up the mighty mouse just kind of like these holes are too long and kind of address it and kind of organize it a bit but the first thing is I'm just going to use this uh, little T barb here to kind of keep this here and I'm gonna trim this hose so it doesn't create this belly that it's creating um, and then I'm going to leave this as is. Like I said, I did earlier on in the video, I did buy an adapter here to create this elbow into an AN fitting. And then I have an AN uh, 90 degree that will convert to match this here. Um, but I'm waiting on that piece to come in. So for now, I'm just going to kind of put this in place. And in case the, my, uh, my AN setup doesn't work, this will definitely work. Because even though this is already working, but it's kind of stupid to have a T here. Um, and then this side just be capped. So I'd rather just have, you know, a 90 degree elbow, trim this hose so it's not belling and uh, we should be in a much better place. So I'm really loving how the uh, catch can now with the proper elbows in there. I had the, the hoses when I placed it the last time, you know, the car was, we we're just trying to figure out why it was smoking. And I, I just kept pivoting and making changes to the car and not really, uh, and just being super reactive. Now that, you know, I'm not really forcing this car onto the racetrack anytime soon. We also saw that it was capable of running on the racetrack. Now it's dialing it in and fixing it up. So put the elbows on there, routed the hoses better. I'm gonna tie strap some of them to kind of keep them close together. Um, and then, like I said, I need to route that PCV setup from the, the dry sump. And, and I think that's the biggest one, especially out on track, building up a ton of crankcase pressure on D-cell. So I'm going to uh, route this one and then I got to tap it into the intake coupler. I'm a little nervous about that. I bought like these little 3 8 barbs here and I'm just basically going to tap it in there and have it connect. Um, and then if it works out and everything run and it doesn't fall out, then I'll... Uh, looking at how I can convert that to AN as well. Uh, but right now I'm happy with the PCV system getting a little bit better and hopefully just helping the car be a little bit healthy. Um, so I'm gonna tap into there now, uh, trying to decide where, where I can route the hose properly, where it's not uh, causing this to flex too much or move and put pressure on the coupler and go from there. So 
had to change real quick, have a quick shower because I'm taking the wife to go see uh, the Marvels in about a couple hours. So I wanted to make sure that I was kind of cleaned up and not work on the car for too long. But I was able to fix all the PCV or a better set, just kind of clean up the routing and I, you know, I'll cut to a clip here, but um, routed it off the intake like it's designed to be. So um, my assumption is now when I put it back under some high, some high speeds that I'll have far less crank pressure and hopefully less pressure on my piston rings and causing the black smoke and all the soot that I had on the back bumper um, when I was on the last one. I also fixed the elbow and trimmed on the top valve cover. Again, I'm waiting on some AN fittings. Um, I won't make a video about that. Maybe on the next video, I'll just kind of cut to that so you guys can see the change there. And then I organized the Mighty Mouse, which was, you know, like I said earlier, I just kind of put it together to kind of get the car running and seeing if that was going to fix, you know, the oiling issue that I was experiencing where I was just blowing blows, black smoke. I will say the smoke is far less now after everything, but you know, we've done valve seals, we've done new gas, you know, we've done valve seals. We actually replaced a couple of valves. Um, you know, we obviously put the Mighty Mouse catch can, we cleaned out the whole intake manifold and we're still finding a little bit. I'm not really too concerned with it, but if I can clean any of it up and just increase the safety and the health of the car, I'm gonna do that. So that's why with the down type, I routed this properly. Now, there's one thing to note. Obviously, I'm now pulling air from my intake um, and what I'm hoping for is that there's no oil kind of going in there and more oil going back into the intake manifold, but we'll keep a close eye on that and make sure. I don't suspect that it should be too much of a problem um, when I had the intake manifold off, I mean, when I had the uh, intake coupler off, I just kind of looked in the throttle body quickly and it, did, it didn't look too bad or anything like that. So um, all is good. I'll take it for a ride in a little bit and uh, and go from there. But there's there's not really going to be a change. My battery's about to die on the camera. So if you've made it this far, like, subscribe, share the video, um, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.